owns everything around me. Queen, get the money. Dollar, dollar bill, yo. Hello and welcome to Mustard Seed Recordings Audio Timing Training Part 4. We're going to focus in on the groove tool which can be used to copy or you know lift the DNA or the feel of a particular song or musician and apply it to another musician or another loop. And it's kind of a neat trick to do. It's kind of the next step beyond tempo mapping to really get a song to groove. I'm going to show you that with a couple of famous riffs here so that you can uh, see how we can just take ordinary loops such as this rock drum loop over here. It's kind of a boring loop there and we're going to map it to this. That's the Staple Singers uh, 1972 hit. I'll take you there, which has an absolutely killer bass line groove in it, in my opinion. It's one of those bass line grooves that you pretty much can't get out of your head once you've heard it. We're going to map that, focusing specifically on that bass line groove, and make that drum loop follow it exactly. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the reason that we're doing this is we want the groove pattern transients to line up with the beginning of the clip, and then in essence line up with the song. I'll show you in a second. If you see how we, it actually stores the tempos, they're, they're basically storing the time for that transient in relationship to the beginning of the clip. So let's go ahead and identify some transients. So we'll go to the Audio Bend toolbar. And you notice they have standard and sensitive detection. We're going to go first with just standard and we'll hit an Analyze. Now the reason we're doing this and not just hitting the cube Q command. So those of you who have, have tried to use this stuff before and you just hit the Q command, the Q command automatically defines your transients and maps to a particular resolution of the quantization and all that stuff. It does about three things for you automatically. You want to actually go through and do them one at a time so you can fine tune them. So let's go ahead and detect the transients. Now if I haven't said it already, I'm not trying to match the exact playing of the drummer with this groove. What I'm trying to do is match the feel of the bass player where he pushes and pulls the beat. So I'm going to pay attention to the transients landing on the key bass notes. If I give an example, this would be if I were to create a groove with this many transients in it, other instruments would line up to all sorts of extraneous beats and it wouldn't work very well. So it's simpler the better. So example this would probably not be good enough to capture the groove. This we're getting closer. There's this little 16 pickup thing that they do there that might be of interest. It's not picking up some things in here and some things in here. If you want you can go ahead and try it with the sensitive mode on, try that, and then back off on the threshold. Or if you want, you can actually go in and manually insert a couple of them. I'm going to go back to the standard, analyze it. I'm kind of looking at is trying to pick up that beat right there. That beat right there. Okay, so this is pretty close. I'm just missing that one beat on the drums. I'm just going to manually add it in. I'm going to hit 7 on my keyboard, which is the bend tool. And I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit. And holding the shift key down to, so that I'm overwriting the snap settings. And I'm just going to put it right about there. And we've got a couple extraneous ones here. I'm going to just go ahead and delete. Just so you don't get some kind of ghost notes there, here and there. Anyway, that is kind of what it takes to, to pull the groove, out, identify the groove in the, the song. And then once you've done that, 
then you hit your quantize toolbar and drag that set of transients into the pool. Now if we apply that to the drum groove, I'm going to go ahead and just bring in that drum, mediocre drum beat, and I'm going to dupe it out four times. Now this groove is, you're hearing the groove over more than one measure, so you see if I, if I were to apply it this way, only the first part of the groove would get applied to each one of the loops. If I go to the second or the third one, then that section of the loop or the groove will get applied to it. So watch what I do here. Is the first section applied to all of them? Is the second section applied to all of them? The third section of the groove applied to all of them. And the fourth section of the groove applied to all of them. Yeah. So what I do is I take all these and I bounce them into one clip then apply, apply it against the four measures and I get kind of the best results. There you go. An example of uh, grabbing the groove, and the groove I'm talking about is actually the bass groove because the drum the drummer is actually not doing all the uh, rim shots and stuff that the real drummer is doing in the song. If you want to add those in, that's just an extra. Uh, you could do that with a MIDI track, or you can do it with just individual hits and put them in, and then quantize to the groove if you wanted to get an exact copy of how the drummer was playing, for example. To show you that it works just as well with MIDI as audio. I've created a simple little drum pattern here to go along with this uh, Earth, Wind and Fire uh, Let's Groove tonight, but they're not in sync because I've just dropped the beats on the grid. Right now the grid. A little bit out of sync there, especially on the kick drum. So let's go ahead and drop this groove into there. And then we will apply it to the MIDI. And you notice that these moved over in kind of a triplet swing feel because uh, the, the drummer's kind of got a swing on it. And that is the feel. So let's go ahead and see if they're in sync. Sounds good. I'm missing one kick there, but definitely created that groove. Now if I wanted to save this one, I could uh, just go up here to the plus button on this, the grooves and save it. Okay, this way you can get, if you like particular style music, you can save a variety of different grooves that you can just start with to line up some beats. And you can, then you can grab uh, any loop out of the stock Studio One uh, library and turn it into an Earth, Wind, and Fire loop. Here's an example of actually dropping in the MIDI notes after the grid has already been applied. So here's a, the loop is Rosanna Shuffle. I've already actually done an apply to the to the shuffle. You see, I've got the uh, Rosanna showing up here in, the, in terms of the quantization. So it's going to use the Rosanna grid to line up my notes. So when I drop in notes, they will naturally line up with where they're supposed to be dropped in. So I'll just uh, kind of show you how. That... Now you notice if I click on the timeline, it'll automatically snap to the next landmark or transient makes it handy for putting the notes in exactly where they need to be so you can see how easy it is to actually match up the groove just by writing the MIDI notes out against that grid Unfortunately, you can't see that grid, but you uh, you can see that it does speed things up, and you can, these things are going to naturally just snap to where they're supposed to be. So they snap to where that grid is.
Okay, here's a couple extra commands and even another way to get the groove to work for you. This is a beat from Wa Tang Chang. One of the original hip hop beats. An interesting story about this is as I was investigating how to get grooves and pick up grooves, I studied music all the way back to the uh, 1930s when the swing era started and all the way up to present day and ironically the hip-hop popularity started it started on the same year as Akai's MPC drum machine introduced the swing feel into it and you'll find out much of that hip-hop music started with a swing feel of around 60 to 66 and so um, Roger Lynn actually invented that swing feel capability within the machine and that is when drum machines started actually developing a feel to them so let's actually just try this here's a couple of things first of all if you're playing around with a uh, I'm gonna just pick some standard grooves here these are grooves that are people have put out on the exchange you can get download for studio one here's MPC 60 MPC 3000 Abraham DX so on and so forth and uh, I'm just gonna apply just one of these incorrectly I'm just gonna apply that one right there 75 percent and apply it to it and it doesn't quite line up the way I want it to do it but not bad if I want to undo that all I have to do is do a shift Q and it puts that back and it takes it out so here's your straight rock beat um, 95 beats per minute rock beat that we've been using for examples throughout this session and you can see it doesn't line up it's close but it doesn't line up you can see that so what I'm going to do is actually apply just a standard 60 on this one and there we go and apply it and you can see that's a pretty close match to what they're using there it's because the song's actually been generated from a drum machine which is generating a um, a standard percentage swing from as I mentioned once that once they invented the swing in the drum machine it So that's what a lot of hip hop got started was with that swing, like I said, anywhere from 60 to 70 percent. And then the cool thing about it is that it has a different feel depending on what beats per minute you're at. So at this particular beats per minute, which is the original beats per minute was up here at around uh, 90 beats per minute, that 60 percent works pretty good. <laughs> Of course, and if I wanted to just absolutely grab the, the exact thing, I just grab, drop that up in there, and then apply this to it, and it would line it up exactly. That's just a little history lesson on the MPC, a Kai MPC, and the invention of swing in the drum machine. Let's now have some fun uh, just playing around, uh, matching matching up uh, musicians to each other, one, matching one musician's groove to another musician's groove. I'm just going to take one of the demo songs that Personas gave us to play with. This is Rick's uh, group, Fat Hat, doing a song called The Governor, and I'm just going to go in and just show you how you can tighten up a few things and even change the groove of uh, the song. Let's go ahead and try that. So here is a part where the bass player and Rick are playing a guitar lick here. I'm going to go ahead and take this track and take this little section here. I've actually already done it and I'm going to undo it using doing a shift Q. And here's how it originally was. Let's put that into a loop. Now, this group is extremely tight and it so it literally sounds like it's been quantized almost to the grid. What I'm going to do is just tighten it up just a little bit more. There's, these are subtleties, but you should be able to hear a slight difference. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the bass player, which I don't know his name, uh, actually has a groove. I'm going to tighten Rick up to the bass player for no particular reason, just to show you that we can do that. So I'm going to take the bass player. 
and select groove go over here and drag that groove into there and then select Rick's guitar and apply it and now let's just listen to them together <laughs> tightens them up a little bit. That's an example of tightening one musician against another musician, especially when they're playing a very similar line like that. Here I'm going to take the entire course of the song, select all the band, and I'm going to groove quantize it to the MPC 66 swing. Okay, let's see what it, it ended up doing. Cross our fingers here. Devil, do you well? You might want to be one of all those things, and I'm sure they ain't gonna love you. But if you're in Baton Rouge, if nothing else, what you want to be is the governor. Devil. And definitely added a swing to it. Listen to the fill on this. Do you well? You might want Hear that? There's a swing to it. All those things, and I'm sure they ain't gonna love you. But if you're in Baton Rouge, if nothing else, what you wanna be is the governor. Now, I'm not saying there was something wrong with the song and we needed to fix this, but you can see how you can completely change the feel of an entire song. Here we applied it to 20 tracks, and um, it went through and adjusted the timing to an MPC 66 uh, swing the entire band and it sounds great and so it's pretty amazing what you can do with this tool so hopefully that gives you a good overview of the groove tool and how you can use it to get grooves from one musician apply it to another musician how you can copy grooves off of famous grooves from other songs and apply them or build another song based off that same type of groove you know create your own hip-hop beats Whatever you want, it's really easy to do once you uh, kind of understand how the power of that um, groove tool, which has been built into Studio One since 2.0. Happy grooving. Do you will. You might want to be one of all those things, and I'm sure they ain't gonna love you. But if you're in Baton Rouge, if nothing else, what you want to be is the governor. Cash rules everything around me. Cream, get the money. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all.